before we move on to addressing the proper aftermath of Abattoir's death in full, we have an issue of Showcase 94 to cover, with the story Crooks from Issue 7. This story is written by Peter David, with art by P. Craig Russell, colors by Laverne Kinderski, lettering by Ken Bresniak, and edited by the legendary Denny O'Neill and Neil Posner. This is effectively a one-room story. The Penguin has kidnapped S um, Sarah Essen Gordon and has stuffed her in an egg somewhere that is filling with gas. Cobblepot has turned himself in and is being interrogated by Commissioner Gordon. He has waived counsel and has specifically asked for Gordon to interrogate him. What becomes clear as they wait for Asbat to respond to the bat signal is that both men are scared of Asbat. Penguin is scared to the point that he is actively trying to change, if you'll use the term from Venture Brothers, his arch from Batman to Commissioner Gordon. Speaking of movies, did you see Jurassic Park? I don't have time for films. I don't have time for this. It discusses the latest scientific theory about how birds are descended from dinosaurs. Isn't that wild? marvelous? I think that's a splendid metaphor for the two of us, James. Two old dinosaurs going at it one last time. A toothless tyrannosaur and a flapping per pteranodon. We are dinosaurs, you know. You and I. We appreciate style. Finesse. Not like nowadays, where any toothpick bit punk with spandex and a homicidal attitude thinks he's a hero. When we caught, when we caught you. When I allowed myself to be caught. You said you had Sarah hidden away. Prisoner. He said by midnight she was going to be dead. I know what I said. I was there. She's trapped in a giant egg. With gas wouldn't be released. Why? She won't escape. Why are you doing this? Tell me, James. Don't ask me. Tell me. Certainly the years you've spent hanging with the caper to Seder must have rubbed off on you. Tell me why, you think. Because you want to stick it to me. Ha! <laughs> Two pedestrians. Because you want to gloat. Plenty of time for that after. Because you want me to stop you. Because you want me to save her. Nonsense. It's true, Oswald. I can call you Oswald, can't I? As you wish. You're like an egg, Oswald. Egg on the outside, smooth and hard. And on the inside, squirming. You're starting to crack. Wahaha! <laughs> Very good, James. Good metaphor. Touche. But why am I squirming? Because Batman is all you've got. Not a fact. Yes, the riches you steal, the crimes you commit, they're not for you. They're for him. To draw him to you. To start the game all over again. But you've noticed that lately is tougher. Angrier. So suddenly you're nervous about taking him on head to head. You're afraid you're passé. So you strike at someone else, someone helpless. Then you, yourself brought, then you get yourself brought to police headquarters so you can gloat. Because lording it over me while I'm captured isn't nearly as entertaining as lording it over me while I'm free and someone else is in danger. You want to lord it over Batman. You're dying to. Dying to? Funny choice of words, James. I'm dying. She's dying. Batman... Is he dead, James? Ultimately, Gordon and Penguin both lose their cool, and Gordon drags Penguin to the roof and threatens to throw him off. He's only stopped by Asbat arriving with Sarah, and Asbat revealing that he knew what was up and skipped going to GCPD and went straight to the rescue. This story is wonderful. It's like it's like Beckett. Well, not literally. It's not grappling with the same metaphorical concepts or philosophical concepts in the same way that Waiting for Godot does. It's not bit textual in the ways that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead are, where it's playing with the concept of what's happening to supporting characters, na characters narratively when they're not active and on stage in the story itself. But it's two supporting characters whose existence is defined by their relationship to another leading role. One is ally and support with Commissioner Gordon and the other as antagonist with Penguin and the two trying to realize together what they are when the protagonist changes, especially in the context of the DC universe where 
Legacy characters at this point are a fact of life. We have multiple Green Lanterns of Earth. We're on our second Flash. Um, not to mention that in the not too distant future, we're going to have um, the Green Lantern who has been at the forefront, Hal Jordan, go away. This is the first time Batman has changed, and we have one of the members of the supporting cast, Mr. Gordon, and one of the members of the Rogues Gallery, one of the few, and one of the few of that Rogues Gallery who can have this conversation, sitting down to talk about it, with the overarching framework of Penguin having to kidnap Gordon's wife and stash her in a death trap to force a situation where he can have this conversation. And also bears mentioning this is a turning point for Penguin as a character. Going forward, this is the point where he starts to shift from big elaborate heists and death trap to the penguin that we know more recently as the gangster who runs the Iceberg Lounge. Even because he's realized that if someone on his side of the fence wins the fight against Batman, even if he wins the fight against Batman, someone else is going to pick up the mantle. And the way that the bat fights afterwards won't be the way it was before. And... If Penguin continues as he did before, he's not going to like, he doesn't like the possibilities of what could happen as a result of that. I wish we'd gotten a couple other versions of this or iterations on this concept, like with Robin, whether it was him and Catwoman, or maybe even if Two Face has an extended period of lucidity and drew Robin out to ask. Still, this was a wonderful story and an excellent part of the Nightfall saga. And even if it's not in your, oh, not even. If this is not in your Nightfall reading order, you are doing something wrong. Next time, Asbat takes on a couple gun nuts. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.